Hello, this is uh, Roland from Implant Canada. So, this morning I received an interesting project. I was sent this picture here, and I was told, hey, look at this panel here that we did. For some reason, CSA uh, did not approve it. Um, there, we, we have a couple of um, things here that are cut out, not too sure why. And um, what I'd like to know is what are our options? So my reflex was, of course, to take this project and to first have a look at a few different options. So my first option was to actually look around for a part um, on the retail side. So I was just over here and I checked out for a panel that might actually be a little bit bigger. That might be the easy solution, right? Just replace the panel. So technically this panel, I got the part number, checked it out, found the part number. And I'll see if that is a possibility. So let's take a look here. Here is my option number one. Let's exchange the panel. So the panel part number, um, of course, let's put them side by side. Just as an example here, if I uh, put this here side by side, we can check here. This is a digital twin. So that means that I did exactly the same panel and I'm putting it side by side here. Let's take a look. If I just move this slightly around like this, I probably have exactly the same thing. So you can see the same components up here. This is the same component, this here. And you can actually see that it crashes right into exactly what we see here. So this was really <clears throat> in or, or could actually have been seen here on the digital twin. But yet we did it. We have an issue. We have to correct it. So. Option number one, let's go and pick a bigger part number. So the part number I'm looking for is this one here, 107600. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go inside here on that particular uh, enclosure and I'm gonna exchange my part. It's actually quite easy to do because all you have to do is pick this here, say, okay, let's exchange the part number. Uh, am I actually open on this project here? Let's see. Is it read only just to see? Because it could be read only. Yes, it is. So I'll have to create very quickly a uh, revision. And this is my option one bigger size panel, which will be a retail.107600. Okay. Now, this means it opens, and you see it turns out to be now in gray, and I can now, here, take this and exchange the part number on that particular uh, enclosure. So, right mouse click here, exchange part, and 11, uh, what was it, 100, zero, zero, I'm not too sure, 1076. Let's see what we have, 1076000. Let's quickly look it up. This is exactly what it is. It's the same width. It's a little bit higher, same depth. Let's try it out. So we'll just take it. <clears throat> there we go. And I'll take the variant A, which is fine. There we go. Let's see what happens. And it actually repositioned most of the components there. Boom, like this. Looks really great, right? If you look at it from the front end side, we can now stretch exactly what we wanted. We could stretch the back plate a little bit or the components on the back plate. We could actually take this guy here, just you know, change the length a little bit, go up to the highest portion here, uh, do the same on this side here, there we go. Uh, take this guy here, just move it up there, um, change the handle very quickly on the top left corner. There we go. Now this guy here, we can move it probably up to here. We have now a little bit more room. We have here this one, we'll move it also up a little bit. And we can move this guy up right in the middle and everyone will be pretty much happy at this point, right? Uh, we could even give ourselves a little bit of room here. We can be very precise about 
how far up we want. So if you want to move it, let's say by exactly 20 millimeters, you can actually say, okay, let's do a um, offset of minus uh, 20. And then you can see we have an offset of minus 20 or an offset of plus 20. So you can move this around. And if you just say, okay, center, center, 20 millimeters, just gonna move it up to exactly that spot. Now, this is one option. What is the consequence? Well, let's think about it. If I just regenerate very quickly this here with the routing, I'll have to rewire the whole thing. Okay, so most of these components cannot be wired with the same length because I need a little bit more length. That means a lot of wiring needs to be done. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We also have <clears throat> another aspect that we have to redo. Of course, we need a new panel. We new, need a new backplate. Uh, we need two new um, um, ducts on, on the right and on the left. Uh, we have to redo the whole drilling. So pretty much we have to scrap one panel and rebuild the next panel with a bigger one. So we pretty much, uh, the only thing we recuperated, of course, in terms of parts, if we actually analyze all the parts, um, we recuperated the uh, most of the center thin rails, but we have to redo the two on the left and right hand side. Then in terms of the drilling, uh, the drilling pretty much has to redo be done entirely, not only here, also on the side, on the top, everything has to be re-drilled. On the assembly, of course, we have to reassemble everything on uh, the new... Well, actually, we could probably move these thin rails from one to the other because they are exactly the same, so we would save a little bit of time there. And as I said, so the door has nothing, the uh, terminal strips have not changed, and in the wire themselves, I probably have to redo the wires because the length has changed entirely. Okay, this is option number one. Cool. Okay, let's let's take this as an option. I'll just freeze it for now. So I'm going to complete the project as it is. <clears throat> okay, and I can upload it to eView and submit it. There's another option I can see is maybe if I g play a little bit of, you know, like Tetris, and I reposition and I try to reposition my components here and there to see if that would actually work. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm, I'm going to go back to my original project. This was actually my first option here. So it's a, it's a copied project. I'm going to go back to the original project, reopen that one and see if I could not find a position somewhere in that panel that would actually fit. And that would certainly be interesting to see what actually happens then. So let's go. Let's go back, reopen the original one. The original one is this one here. And uh, it's read only, of course. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a revision. And in this case here, the revision is actually my option two, which means reposition the issued component with collisions check. Let's see, because this option here would allow me to keep my panel and to keep most of what is already done in the panel. Let's try. Let's see if that works. So I open this one here, go back to my panel. <coughs> Whoops. What did I do here? I basically just closed the layout navigator. No big deal. I'll just reopen it, right? The layout navigator that opens here. Um, and in this layout navigator, um, <clears throat> just let's hide this. Let's dig in to this guy here. Let's see. This is the bigger one. That's not the one I'm interested in. I'm interested in... Wait, not this one. Let's... You know what? Let's take this option one and let's close the project so we don't have any issues. And I'm going to stick to this one here. So let's take this one here. Let's hide this. Let's take a look at the front view. <clears throat> and let's see. 
would it be possible with the collision check, collision check on, to actually move this component and move it eventually here? Let's see. I think it works. I mean, that was easy, right? I could have moved it just here or here, maybe just on this side here. Let's put it on this one. That would allow me to actually do it. Everything else is pretty much stays. So if I remember my picture correctly, I would just move it down here and redo these two docks and rails, right? So technically, uh, this and this rail here, I would have to mark it up and, and to say, okay, please, you know, redo it. Uh, is there a way to mark those up? Most likely, if I go to the properties here, under the parts, I can pretty much look at what we call your parts reference data. And on the procurement here, I can say this is revision three in this particular case that will require it. And I will be able to actually find it in some different areas. So to mark them up, I need them. And that's really cool because I can then pull it out uh, separately. Now, this being said, uh, what happens to the rest of what we did? Well, we will have a new routing, but that's no big deal because most of the components are routed exactly the same way. So we don't have too many wires we have to take off and we have to reposition because of what the previous revision was. It's just basically moving those components down. And on the other side, if I go back here to my pages and I say now, okay, let's put this up to date. Let's see if on this one particular page, where I actually know that, you know, I have only these two parts that I want. How could I actually display this on my, uh, my reports? Let's say, let's see, let's figure that one out. Might be uh, not as easy, but we'll figure that one out, okay? So as an example here, I'm gonna go down to my manufacturing section, to my cutting section, to my panel A1, and of course, the only ones that I need, again, are these two, D20 and D30. Now, in this particular thing here, I don't necessarily see the revision. Now, it's not something that I would typically put in this report here, but hey, let's show you how one of these enclosure legends is actually created up front. So up front, how this was created, is basically based here on a new report, Enclosure Legend, right? This is how we actually created it in the very first place. We say manual placement of current page. Um, can we actually add here some additional filters? Yes, we can. We can put filters here, okay, for specific devices. And what I'm gonna create is a specific filter for procurement. Rev revision three, okay? Remember, this is what I assigned on my procurement. So I'm gonna go here for the procurement. See if I have it, procurement, uh, pro. procurement, 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 product device tag, I don't have it. If I don't have it here as an enclosure legend, hmm, okay. Let's go and check if I can generate something else called uh, just a parts list. So I may actually be able to generate a parts list, uh, manual placement. And let's go here for a filter that will also do the same thing for Rev3, okay? So what I'm looking for is the procurement, procurement, <clears throat> here that will have basically any value three. Let's see if that works, okay? Now, of course, the form I have, which might be a big or smaller form, I'm not sure if it actually will fit here. I'm gonna try this one out and I'm gonna put this here just there. It's a little bit overlapping, but it's just to see if I get the D20 and the D30. Yes, I do. Now it's just a matter of getting, and you can see these docks and rails. If I do get them and fit them in my um, in my page, well, 
Because of the way I have this here, I could also play with my one to two. And this is basically the scale of the page and that just fits more stuff onto it. That's one way I could do it. Um, maybe what I could do is take this, have it just fit it up there. So just let's say we undo very quickly. Okay, we're going back here. We just move our stuff a little bit down like this. Let's put this on the side. Let's make this a little bit smaller like this here. Uh, we can just fit it right here. Front view, one, two, three. Why don't we just manually have it fitted there? Boom. And put the parts list that needs to be changed right there. The full enclosure legend there. Now we got exactly the page I want. So I want them to redo this. Of course, in the next version, they don't have to just redo those ones. So, um, and that's all I have to do. Reposition my items and we're done. Wow. This is really awesome because between having this project running and the other project running, well, honestly, I prefer not having to wait for that bigger panel because if I have to wait for that bigger panel, honestly, it's going to take time, time. And there's a lot to do on that bigger panel. Honestly, a lot. Uh, as we saw a little bit earlier, we have to go on individually on the, uh, uh, we have to replace everything. We have to reposition. We have to refabricate. Whereas in this option here, where it actually fit it down there, it would have been nice to actually know it up in advance. If we would have used the digital twin, we would have known that this fitted down there without any issues. The height is good, everything is good. So we would have been perfectly in line with what we needed. No reason to actually have to cut out these items here. So we this is the beauty of what we call the digital twin. The digital twin all starts with data from the data portal. This is where all the data comes from. The manufacturers give us the 3D picture, the size, the commercial information, the connection information, everything we need. And from there, we actually then can build a digital twin that will look exactly and entirely as the real thing. And this would not happen. This is a collision check that is really one of the main reasons. And you know what? I did this all in a prototype format. I did not waste anything. And I think that my option two is actually my better option. I don't really mind that the power supply is down there on that first here. So let's see what the end result is. At one point in time, I'll add the real picture of the modification as it is, but now I have my documents ready for my people to actually pre-cut the two ducks and rails uh, that have to be pre-cutted in the right length. And there we go. Uh, that's all I have to do in repositioning. Really cool. I like it. I love it. Thank you. This was Roland again from ePlan Canada. I hope you appreciated this small video showing you the advantages of our digital twin. Really, this is ePlan at its best. Thank you.